Many years ago, I bought a mechanics tool set, and it was probably the best investment I've ever made because it saved me a lot of time and money. Well, I just went out and bought eight more brands to see which brand is the best. Let's compare the selection and performance of the wrenches, ratchets, and adapters. Let's also build out a complete tool kit that'll meet just about every basic mechanical need. All the tool sets we'll be testing have a quarter, three eighths, and half inch drive. The tool sets will also have SAE and metric. At a value price of only $140 for 225 pieces is this Pittsburgh brand, which is sold at Harbor Freight. One of the first factors to consider when buying a mechanics tool set is whether or not the tools inside the case stay in the proper position. I had all the tool sets mailed to me and the Pittsburgh has 40 items out of place. Unfortunately, part of the toolbox case is already broken. The kit includes the most common metric sizes of 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15 millimeters. It's also the only kit with an adjustable wrench, diagonal cutters, and needle nose pliers. Nut drivers and bits run up the numbers on the tool count and usually don't offer nearly as much value as other tools. I give the Pittsburgh a rating of a B for organization. Quarter inch deep sockets are located in the top half of the box. There are a few half inch drive sockets on the top row of the bottom half of the toolbox. There's a decent assortment of quarter and three eighths inch sockets in the kit. It's very nice to see socket extensions, universal joints, and socket adapters in this kit. The maximum hex key sizes include a quarter inch and eight millimeters. Larger sizes are definitely needed for many vehicles. And the three ratchets made by Pittsburgh have a 72 tooth count. The Pittsburgh brand is made in Taiwan. The tool kit weighs 26.9 pounds. And manufacturers sell ratchets using marketing information about arc swing and tooth count. They're trying to convince you that their ratchet is the best for working in a tight space. So let's take the 3 8 inch ratchet from each brand and see how they perform working within a 30 degree space. Let's see how many right to left passes it takes to spend one full 360 degree rotation. If you're working in a tight space with the Pittsburgh, it's probably going to take a while to get the job done. And it's 23.5 right to left swings for one full rotation. At a price of only $149 is this Craftsman tool set. According to Craftsman, over $950 value for only $149. The kit includes 262 two pieces. The Craftsman has a lock that secures all three trays. The top tray includes quarter inch drive tools and hex keys. It has one quarter inch drive extension. I really don't like the vertical orientation of some of the sockets and there's a lot of wasted space in the toolbox. The maximum hex key sizes aren't quite large enough at only 5 16 and 7 millimeters. The ratchets have 72 teeth. The middle tray has 3 8 inch drive tools and a nice assortment of deep sockets. However, it is missing socket adapters and universal joints. The bottom tray includes the wrenches and half inch drive tools. Only 4 SAE and 4 metric wrenches means that this kit will definitely need supplemented with a proper set of wrenches. Compared to the Pittsburgh, the Craftsman is much better organized, but it's lacking a lot of tools. And a Craftsman tool set is made in Taiwan. And it's 30.84 pounds for the Craftsman. Just like the Pittsburgh, the Craftsman has 72 teeth, but the handle is pretty large. However, the gear set does seem more fine compared to the Pittsburgh ratchet and it completed one full rotation and 21.9 passes to move into the lead. At a price of $155 is this DeWalt brand. All of the items inside the DeWalt kit are in the proper location. It includes 192 pieces. Unfortunately, the DeWalt kit does not include any wrenches. The sockets are pressed and locked into place and they take some effort to remove and put back. Overall, this kit includes a very nice assortment of sockets. This kit also has the best assortment of extensions, universal joints, and adapters of the three kits we've looked at so far. The maximum hex key size aren't quite large enough at only 5 16 and 7 millimeters. The DeWalt tool kit is made in Taiwan. The DeWalt kit weighs 35.4 pounds. DeWalt claims that their 72 tooth ratchet delivers a 5 degree arc swing. And the DeWalt's gear set also has 72 teeth and the handle is extremely wide which really hurts ratchet efficiency in a tight space. And the DeWalt moves into third place behind the Pittsburgh at 24.5 right to left swings. At price of $169 is this Husky brand. According to Husky, you'd spend $700 assembling this kit one piece at a time. And 14 pieces are out of the proper location in the Husky set. The SAE wrench set is decent, but it's missing the sizes 12, 14, and 19 millimeters for the metric. It also has some socket extensions. The top part of the toolbox contains the ratchets. It also has some quarter and half inch drive sockets. The top removable tray includes a good set of Allen keys, the best yet in fact, up to sizes 3 8 and 10 millimeters. The top tray also includes quarter inch deep and 3 8 inch standard sockets. The bottom tray has a very nice set of deep sockets. However, they leave out some key metric sizes for some of the 3 8 inch drive sockets. The Husky is packaged in China, but it has goods from Vietnam, Taiwan, and China. The Husky kit's the heaviest yet at 43.2 pounds. And the Husky ratchet also has 72 teeth, but the handle diameter is designed for working within a tight space. Husky claims a 5 degree working arc swing, and it just completed one full rotation and only 19 passes to move into the lead. At a price of $219 is this Cobalt brand. Several items in the kit are out of the proper location. A maximum size of 1 quarter inch and 7 millimeters for the hex key set is undersized for most vehicles. The top part of the tool box has 3 8 inch drive sockets and there's a lot of wasted real estate between each of the sockets. A more efficient use of space would eliminate one tray and save a lot of time searching for sockets. 
Unfortunately, there's no way to lock the three tool trays. The top tool tray contains standard 3 8 and one half inch drive sockets. The second tray has a few more sockets, three ratchets, and several extensions. The bottom tray includes a pretty nice assortment of wrenches, but it's missing the 15 millimeter size. Unfortunately, the quality of the tool case is the worst yet. This is a brand new kit and the tray falls out of position. The kit is also missing universal joints and socket adapters. The Cobalt Mechanic set is made in Taiwan. And it's 34.55 pounds for the Cobalt. And the Cobalt has a 90 tooth ratchet and should easily outperform all the previous brands as they have 72 teeth. Even though the Cobalt does have 90 teeth, the gear set is very sloppy and inefficient for a 90 tooth ratchet. However, 21.5 passes is good enough to move into second place behind the Husky. At a price of $240 is this Starwork brand. Up top, the Starwork brand has ratcheting wrenches. It's a pretty nice set, but it does not include a 19 millimeter wrench. And the hex key set includes up to sizes one quarter inch and eight millimeters. The bottom half of the toolbox includes a pretty thorough set of standard size sockets for quarter, three eighths, and a half inch drive. For deep sockets, the set only includes a quarter and three eighths inch sockets. Unfortunately, there is not a 19 millimeter deep socket in this kit. It also has some socket extensions. The Starwork brand is made in Taiwan. And a Starworks kit weighs 28.1 pounds. Just like the Cobalt, the Starwork has a 90 tooth ratchet. And the Starworks gear set seems far more refined than the Cobalt's. And 18.3 back and forth passes is good enough to take the lead from the Husky. At a price of $253 is this Crescent brand. The top level of the Crescent toolbox contains the wrenches. It does not include an 11 millimeter wrench or a 16 millimeter and larger wrenches. Fortunately, the tool trays can be locked. A few sockets are out of position inside the top tool tray. Each of the three ratchets has 72 drive teeth. However, it is pretty nice to have the quarter inch drive sockets, extension, and ratchet located in one tray. The second shelf has a nice assortment of 3 8 inch sockets. A few more sockets fell out of position on the second shelf. The second shelf also includes an extension and an adapter. And the crescent ratchet has a couple of holes near the directional lever that exposes the internal parts to dirt and debris. Definitely not a good design. The bottom shelf has a very basic set of standard half inch drive sockets and hex keys. The hex key set includes up to sizes quarter inch and six millimeters. Overall, it's a fairly well organized tool set. The Crescent kit weighs just under 31 pounds. And the 92 Crescent ratchet should have a four degree arc swing. And the Crescent ratchet has by far the largest head in the lineup. However, it's also the most efficient so far with an impressive 18 right to left passes. At a price of $355, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Gear Wrench. The three ratchets have 90 teeth for a working arc swing of four degrees. Also, the half inch drive extensions, adapters, and universal joints are also up on top. This kit has by far the best assortment of standard size sockets. It also includes some pretty large sockets in the kit. Both of these are Gear Wrench 90T ratchets. The one on the left is included in this kit, and the one on the right is the ratchet that won the 3 8 inch drive ratchet showdown. The one in the kit is quite a bit larger and definitely not going to be nearly as competitive. Fortunately, the Gear Wrench trays can be locked into position. The top tool tray includes a quarter inch drive ratchet, universal joint, and extensions. It also includes quarter and 3 8 inch drive sockets. Gear Wrench has done a great job of packing more sockets on each shelf compared to most of the other brands. The middle shelf includes 3 8 inch deep sockets, extensions, a universal joint, and some adapters. And the bottom tray includes the best selection of wrenches of all the brands. It includes wrenches sizes 6 to 19 millimeters. Very impressive. And the Gear Wrench kit is right at 43 pounds. And the Gear Wrench 90T ratchet also claims to offer a 4 degree arc swing. And the Gear Wrench is making about 20 degrees of progress with each pack. And the gear wrench just moved into a two way tie with the Crescent at 18 passes. So the Crescent and gear wrench tied for first place at 18 right to left passes for one complete 360 degree rotation. Star work also performed very well at 18.3 passes. A ratchet with a lot of back drag really makes removing or installing fasteners in tight spaces a challenge at times. If there's enough space, adding resistance to the socket using finger pressure allows the ratchet to make progress, but that's not always an option. I'll be using a 7 8 inch socket, fishing line, and a scale to measure the back drag. And the Pittsburgh ratchet did struggle a little bit on the working arc swing test, but it performed well on this test at 212 grams. And the Craftsman didn't perform quite as well as the Pittsburgh at 290 grams of back drag. And the Dewalt really struggled in this test at 409 grams, which is about twice as much back drag as the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh. And the Husky also struggled with excessive back drag at 338 grams. And the Cobalt moves into second place behind the Pittsburgh at 271 grams. And the Starwork just moved into first place ahead of the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh at only 183 grams of back drag. And the Crescent performed almost the same as the Craftsman at 282 grams. And the Gear Wrench just moved into third place with 251 grams of back drag. So the Starwork finished in first place at 183 grams. Pittsburgh finished in second at 212 grams and Gear Wrench 251 grams of back drag. Let's go ahead and test the performance of the combination wrenches next on this extremely soft cup 
grappling nut. This is very soft metal and should not cause too much harm to high quality wrenches. I'll be using a proto torque wrench calibration tool which is extremely precise. And the Pittsburgh's jaw opening is 0.5065 inches. Let's see how much torque it takes to round the coupling nut. And the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh gave up at only 411.9 inch pounds on the first attempt. I'll rotate the coupling nut 180 degrees so I can test the Pittsburgh again on the undamaged part of the coupling nut. And the Pittsburgh gave up even sooner on the second attempt at 384 inch pounds. And the jaw on the Pittsburgh has stretched to 0.511 inches. And the Craftsman has a tighter fit on the coupling nut at 0.5045 inches compared to 0.5065 for the Pittsburgh. And the Craftsman outperformed the Pittsburgh by over 200 inch pounds. Very impressive. And the Craftsman brand continued to perform very well on the second attempt at 603 inch pounds, which will be very hard to beat. We'll skip the DeWalt since the DeWalt does not come with wrenches. And the Husky has a pretty loose fit at 0.0507 inches, the sloppiest fit yet. Even with a sloppy fit, the Husky still performed well at 570 inch-pounds, or about 60 inch-pounds less than the Craftsman. Unfortunately, the Husky lost a lot of ground on the second attempt at 449.1 inch-pounds. That's a 21% performance loss. And the Cobalt also performed well on the first attempt at 525.9 inch-pounds. The Cobalt held up better than the Husky on the second attempt at 491.2 inch-pounds to move into second place. And the Star Wars has a pretty sloppy fit at 0.5075 inches. And a Starwork wrench moves into fourth place behind the Cobalt at 494.1 inch pounds. And a Starwork performed well in the second attempt and did not lose too much performance at 472.5 inch pounds, which is about 20 inch pounds ahead of the Pittsburgh wrench. And the Crescent seems to have a pretty sloppy fit at 0.506 inches and it struggled at 454.3 inch pounds on the first attempt. And the Crescent lost 50 inch pounds of performance on the second attempt at 404.1 inch pounds. And the gear wrench's fit is a little bit sloppier than some of the other brands at 0.5075, but it still performed well at 520.3 inch pounds on the first attempt. And the gear wrench continued to perform very well on the second attempt at 501.6 inch pounds to move into second place behind the Craftsman. So the Craftsman offers the best initial nut busting torque at 627.3 inch pounds. All of the wrenches experienced some performance loss from rounding the nut. However, the Craftsman did finish on top at 603 inch pounds on the second attempt. And gear wrench finished in a distance in second place at 501.6 inch pounds. Let's go ahead and test the close end of the wrenches next. And the Pittsburgh finally rounded off the nut at 1,344 inch pounds. I'll rotate the coupling nut 180 degrees and test the Craftsman on the undamaged part of the coupling nut. And the Craftsman delivered 1,752 inch pounds of torque. That's over 400 inch pounds better than the Pittsburgh. Very impressive. The Craftsman damage area is on the left and the Pittsburgh is on the right. And the Craftsman carved out a wider and deeper path than the Pittsburgh. Skipping the DeWalt since the kit doesn't come with wrenches. And the Husky performed well on the open end of the wrench, and it performed well on this test too at 1,534 inch pounds. And the Husky and Cobalt performed about the same on the open end test, and they performed about the same on the closed end at 1,586 for the Cobalt. Cobalt is on the left, and the Husky is on the right, and both areas of the damaged nut look very close to the same. And the Starwork trailed the Husky and Cobalt on the open end test, and the rafting mechanism just broke on the Starwork at 1,435 inch pounds. And the Crescent's open end performed about the same as the Pittsburgh wrench. Compared to the Pittsburgh, it underperformed on this test at only 1,064 inch pounds. And the Crescent carved out a very narrow and shallow path in the coupling nut. Unlike the other wrenches, the gear wrench has a six point closed end. And the gear wrench refused to round the super soft coupling nut, but the wrench did bend with a peak force of 1,525 inch pounds. Damage caused by the gear wrench is on the left and the Crescent is on the right. So once again, the Craftsman came out on top at 1,752 inch pounds. Cobalt finished in second at 1,586 and Husky 1,534 inch pounds. If you're reaching for the half inch to 3 8 inch socket adapter, you're probably about to apply some serious torque. So let's compare the failure load of each brand. And the Pittsburgh broke at 221.2 foot pounds, which is going to be hard to beat. And the Craftsman wrench performed well in the previous test, but the socket adapter gave up a little bit early at 193.9 foot pounds. And the DeWalt ratchet really struggled against the competition, and the socket adapter is also struggling at only 185.9 foot pounds. And the Husky outperformed the DeWalt ratchet for working arc swing and backtrack. And the Husky also outperformed the DeWalt again at 235 foot-pounds to move into the lead. Let's go ahead and skip the Cobalt, Starwork, and Crescent since they don't come with adapters in their kits. And the gear wrench has performed above average throughout the showdown and it performed above average again at 205.6 foot-pounds. So the Husky came out in first place at 235 foot-pounds. Pittsburgh performed well at 221.2 foot-pounds and gear wrench 205.6 foot-pounds. Up next, let's go ahead and compare the failure load of the 3 8 inch ratchets. And the Pittsburgh's ratcheting mechanism experienced failure at 245.5 foot-pounds. And the Craftsman performed almost the same
same as the Pittsburgh at 245.2 foot-pounds. The ratcheting mechanism survived, but the drive did not. And once again, the DeWalt ratchet underperformed compared to the competition at only 231.7 foot-pounds to move into last place behind the Pittsburgh. Just like the Craftsman, the drive is the point of failure. And the Husky outperformed the Pittsburgh Craftsman and DeWalt on the working arc swing test, and it outperformed them on this test too at 265.7 foot-pounds. And when the drive finally broke, parts went flying everywhere. And the Cobalt ratchet trailed the Husky on the working arc swing test, and it trailed the Husky once again at 255.5 foot-pounds. Just like the Husky, the drive is the point of failure. And the Starwork ratchet performed very well in the showdown, and it performed well in this test too at 259.5 foot-pounds to move into second place behind the Husky. The drive on the ratchet is the point of failure. And the Crescent has a massive ratchet head. And having a big head for the Crescent wasn't enough at only 233.1 foot-pounds. And the point of failure is the internal drive assembly. And the gear wrench ratchet has done the best so far, and it did by far the best on this test at 302 foot-pounds. Very impressive! And the drive broke on the gear wrench. So the gear wrench came out on top with a very impressive 302 foot-pounds. Husky finished in second at 265.7 foot-pounds, and Starwork 259.5. When the toolboxes arrived, some of them had tools inside the case scattered throughout. Let's see how the toolboxes stay organized using a more controlled approach. With a small impact while in the vertical position, the Pittsburgh tools all stayed in the home position. Let's roll over the Craftsman on its side and see if the Craftsman contains the tools in the proper location. And the Craftsman toolbox did a great job. Just like the Pittsburgh and Craftsman, the Dwell's tools all stayed in the proper location. Laying the Husky on its side and then standing it back up, several sockets moved out of position. However, I forgot to place the mat back inside the top of the toolbox. So let's try this again. Much better job. So these mats are very important for keeping the tools in the proper location. The Cobalt tool trays don't lock into position and laying this toolbox forward would create a huge mess. All of the tools inside the Cobalt toolbox stayed in the proper location. Just like the Cobalt, all the tools inside the Starwork case stayed in the proper location. And the Crescent performed just as well as the other brands and all the tools stayed in the home position. Gear Wrench also did a great job of keeping the individual tools in the proper location. All the tool cases seem adequate for moving tools from one location to another. Rating tool case quality is highly subjective. However, the Craftsman, DeWalt, Starwork, and Gear Wrench all received the highest possible rating of 1. How a toolbox is organized is also highly subjective. Most of the toolboxes received a rating of 2. Pittsburgh, Husky, and Cobalt received a rating of 3. Unfortunately, the tools in those tool cases just are not organized for efficient use. The DeWalt is on the left, and the Crescent is on the right. And the Crescent Ratchet has by far the largest head in the lineup. And the Crescent is just way too big and not as well designed for working in a tight space. The DeWalt has the most compact head from side to side, but the Starwork and Husky are also pretty compact. Front to back dimensions are also a factor to consider, and the gear wrench is right at 12.5 millimeters. Husky is about as compact from front to back at 13 millimeters. If one combines the front to back as well as the width measurements, the most compact ratchet is the gear wrench. However, the Husky is just about as compact. So when it comes to just tool performance, which brand is the best? And the gear wrench came out on top with the best average finish of 2.4. Husky had an average finish of 3.3 and Craftsman 3.6. This list took a while and it does not include every tool in each of the kits. However, it is meant to compare the main tools in each kit. Obviously, it's subject to human error. So please double check my work before making a purchase. For standard and deep size quarter inch SAE sockets, the kits are pretty close to the same. For standard and deep 3 8 inch SAE sockets, the gear wrench is by far the best, offering up to a 1 inch socket. Dewalt, Husky, and Crescent also have a good selection. For standard size half inch SAE sockets, the Cobalt and the gear wrench brands offer the best size range. For half inch deep, Dewalt has the best selection. Several of the kits do not even come with half inch deep sockets. For quarter inch drive, standard and metric, all of the brands offer a pretty good size range, but the gear wrench came out on top. Unfortunately, all of the brands skipped or left out key sizes for the metric. 3 8 and half inch drive standard and deep sockets. Adapters, universal joints, and extensions are oftentimes necessary. And the gear wrench offers the most comprehensive assortment of all the brands. For a budget kit, the Pittsburgh has most of the bases covered, and so does the DeWalt kit. SAE wrench selection is pretty limited for most of the brands. And the gear wrench brand offers the best range of sizes. When it comes to wrenches, all of the kits left out key metric sizes except for the gear wrench. And the gear wrench brand offers the best range of sizes. And the Husky offers the best size range for the hex keys. So, looking at all the different categories, overall, the gear wrench offers by far the best selection of tools with the least number of missing sizes. I never drive over 100 miles from home without a decent tool kit with me in the trunk of the vehicle.
vehicle. In addition to having one of these tool kits, there are definitely some must-have tools that I highly recommend including in your tool kit. I really like this gear wrench three drawer toolbox to store extra tools in an organized manner. And this 20 piece gear wrench drive extension, universal joint and adapter kit fills in the missing pieces for any of the kits. In a previous review on screwdrivers, the Craftsman makes a pretty good set of budget screwdrivers for under $20. I highly recommend locking pliers in a tool kit and the Irwin brand proved to be a pretty good performer for under $20 in a previous review. Irwin also makes a great set of diagonal cutters. We definitely want some needle nose pliers in a tool kit. I definitely don't like to go cheap when it comes to water pump pliers and I really like the Knipex brand. I much prefer a wrench or socket but sometimes an adjustable wrench comes in handy and the Crescent brand performed well in a previous review. If you don't carry a pocket knife all the time, a utility knife is a great tool for the toolbox. And sometimes a roll of duct tape is all you need to get through a bind. Some JB Weld is also a great option for an emergency repair. A roll of wire is also a great resource for the toolbox for those emergency repairs. I always keep electrical tape in the toolbox because you never know when you're going to need it. Before I go on a road trip, I also make sure that I have a fully charged jump starter with a tire inflator in the vehicle. I'll leave a list of everything in the video description. I think it's a good idea to remind folks that I always buy everything that's reviewed on this channel and I do not accept sponsorships or even free products from manufacturers. If I had to buy just one set, I would definitely buy the gear wrench set. I know it's expensive, but but I like to say buy once and cry once. If you don't, you'll probably end up wishing you had a better set of wrenches, a set that is complete with all the different sizes. All the videos in this channel include this one or viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.